Yeah. Can you, anabology, can you explain to us where the hell sugar fasting and honey diet and some of this stuff came from? Yeah. So, so I think that like people have actually been doing this for like quite a long time. I mean, so if you look at like Freely and Durian Rider, like these are people who have been doing like these super high sugar diets and and just under the vegan kind of fruitarian sphere. But I don't think it really came into the more kind of mainstream like bodybuilder health health side until like probably the past two years. So uh, about a year and a half ago, I I like found these studies online after kind of growing a Twitter uh, for a little bit in like the repeat space. Uh, and Ray Pete was, uh, you know, this guy who thought that sugar was good. He thought seed oils were bad. And he was talking about this in the 1970s after doing some aging research way before anybody else ever even knew about seed oils. Like everybody was celebrating back in the 1970s, how many, how much soy, uh, production had grown in the U S right. So, uh, I, I learned about Ray Pete and, uh, kind of started a Twitter and, and grew in the Ray Pete space. And through that, I, I eventually found this study where, uh, in I think it was in uh, 2010, these scientists gave mice Coca-Cola instead of water to drink, right? And they were just eating a normal diet otherwise, but like at all at all times, instead of like from their little feeding tube, they get water, they get Coca-Cola, and they measured the amount of calories that they ate over this like study period, and over over like a long time, they the ones that had the Coca-Cola drank. And ate four times the calories as the ones that didn't drink the Coca-Cola that just had water. Yet at the end, they weighed the exact same. So that's like a 400% metabolic rate increase in these mice. And I'm like, why is this like not great, like insane, insanely big news? Um, and the, the study title literally just said something like, oh, soft drinks alter lipid profiles and slightly make your cholesterol like a little bit worse. So they didn't even, you know, they didn't even write in the title of the paper that like they had this insane weight outcome because they were so against sugar that they had to spin it, you know, against soft drinks in some way. So then, I, you know, I saw this paper where, uh, you know, they were drinking a ton of sugar and and not gaining any weight. And I like dug more into it and and uh, found some other papers that had replicated this like in mice in, in the past. Uh, and at the same time, like 2023, there were these papers released by the Lamming Lab uh, which is like a kind of dietary protein restriction studying lab these days. And they found that when they restricted one amino acid called isoleucine in mice, they lived like 30% longer. They, the mice ate more and then they weighed less by the end of the study or by, you know, obviously when they're dead, they're, they're weighing nothing, but like the entire time. Um, so these seem like disparate, right? Because just eat, having isoleucine restriction and then eating a ton of sugar and both of those like leading to weight loss don't really seem connected, but they eventually found that the linking factor between these two things, uh, they found that isoleucine uh, restriction induced FGF21 really strongly. And FGF21 is this factor that's also induced whenever you overeat sugar. So then they also, the, the other, other studies found, there's like a ton of studies here, right? But other studies found that like FGF21 alone uh, was kind of responsible for these protein restriction, life's extending effects, right? And then if you got rid of the FGF21 response, you would get rid of these metabolic rate increase and lifespan extending effects. So then uh, around the same time, I also saw some papers where if you overeat sugar in humans, it induces FGF21. So it's like all the ingredients were there, right? Every side is saying that like FGF21 is induced if you get rid of protein, if you increase sugar, and then that should increase metabolic rate. But at that point, I didn't see anybody ever try it in humans. So I was like, I might as well try it, right? I might as well try this and see if I just eat unlimited sugar as much as I possibly can without protein, do I just start melting off body body fat and then you know feel better, if anything, because I'm coming also from a longevity perspective. So uh, before this, I was eating kind of like a Paul Saladino type diet where I was eating fruit and you know protein throughout the day. So I wasn't completely against sugar. Uh, I was looking into Ray Pete, so every once in a while I'd have a Mexican Coke, but I was, I was only able to eat like 20, you know, 2000, 2500 calories a day, uh, without gaining weight. And then I switched to, uh, what is now known as like the honey diet, where I basically overeat as much honey and sugar as I possibly can in the early part of the day. And I put all of my protein in one meal at night. And after I eat the protein, I have no carbs. And then I was able to increase my meta, my metabolic rate so much where I could eat 3,500 calories a day. And I lost 10 pounds in a month. So it was, it was like a really ridiculous experiment. I was literally eating a pound of honey a day, which is why I was called the honey diet. And that's super interesting. Uh, 
so you mentioned a couple studies with mice mm -hmm. and has this been studied in humans yet? Yeah. So, uh, the closest thing to, uh, this that I've seen studied in humans, uh, was actually released like after I did the honey diet, like almost like a year after. Uh, so it seems like they started the study even after we were already doing this in like the bro science, uh, sphere. But, uh, there was, there was one study where they just gave kind of young men like a protein restricted diet overall. So they weren't even controlling for sugars versus like starch versus, you know, like long chain fats versus like polyunsaturated fats, whatever. They, they just gave them protein restriction, uh, over like a, a month or a couple of months. And they found that the, uh, when they restricted protein, that their energy expenditure went up by like a lot. Right. In this study, they didn't see any weight loss because as their protein restriction increased their metabolic rate, they just fed them more food. But in humans, they restricted protein and then FGF 21 was induced and their metabolic rate went up. So before this, people have, have studied like the hormonal responses overall, where they're like, oh, if we overfeed sugar, overfeed fat with no protein, do we see FGF 21 or not? Like in humans, but they'd never really looked at the metabolic rate changes. So I mean, we're, we're really like on the cutting edge here. Like there, there's studies that are getting close, but nobody has made the connection to where maybe you don't want to do just starch and fat. Maybe you want to do specifically sugar or like MCTs, like, like liver targeting macros is, is kind of the key. And we can dive into that if you want. Uh, so there's like, there's all these kind of different strategies, but this diet in particular, from what I'm seeing, it seems like it gives you some extra play with calories. And I believe there was a study done and I think it was done in humans that someone sent me. Um, and, I, and I apologize. I don't remember like what the heck it was called or anything, but what stood out to me, um, and Ryan, maybe you have it over there, but like what stood out to me was it seemed like there was a discrepancy of like 500 to like 800 calories extra that someone can consume. Do, do you, do you know that study I'm trying to reference or do you know anything about that in particular? Um, I, I don't know about that study in particular. Um, I mean, I do know that, uh, say like, just as an aside, like the, there's the uh, studies like on the biggest loser people who essentially just do a really calorie restricted diet and over exercise, uh, to, to like really cut weight super fast for a show and it works. But then people have studied these people for years later and their metabolic rate has decreased by like the magnitude that you're saying, right. Uh, for even years after that. And then they usually gain all of the weight back and their metabol metabolism is even slower at that same high body weight. So it does seem like there are, uh, you know, there's like some flexibility, at least in the down direction, that's uh, pretty well acknowledged, but in the up direction is like a pretty novel concept. Um, you also mentioned there was a, uh, you mentioned a study uh, that was done on mice on your YouTube channel mm -hmm. um, where the mice didn't lose any muscle mass, um, but I forget how long you said the study was. Can you share some of that with us? I thought that was really compelling. Yeah, so, so, the study, they uh, basically fed these mice different percent protein diets, so zero to 18%, and they looked at them for just one week, right? And the mice, they all started with around seven and a half to eight grams of fat on them. And the 18% protein mice, by the end of it, had no change in body fat. They ended with about seven and a half or eight grams of fat. And then the ones that had 0% protein for one week, they ate the same amount of food, yet they ended with only two, two and a half grams of fat. So they lost almost all of their body fat. And then if you do the calculation, because they don't share the raw data, but they have enough kind of uh, variables around it. If you do the calculations to see how much lean mass they lost, it looks like they lost none or even gained lean mass over the time. There's, there's no way they gained, right? So, so, they, so they lost zero lean mass over this entire week. Um, but yeah, I, I want to like, I want to bring that back to like one thing. It's like kind of the difference between the, the honey diet uh, specifically and then kind of the Cole Robinson ideas here uh, in regards to muscle and working out. So uh, I've done kind of like a deep dive on the literature in uh, like the amount of protein intake that people kind of need to be able to gain muscle and like where it kind of plateaus. And and this is like a, a debated topic probably for the past like, you know, five decades, right? So, uh, but it looks like you can kind of maintain uh, like a neutral or, or decent protein balance or even positive protein balance if you're working out well at around one to 1.5 grams per kilo of, uh, like protein. So for like a 70 kilo male, it's like 70 grams of protein to 120 grams of protein. Um, so with that, uh, I kind of do that with a honey diet where I have my first part of the day 
have basically only sugar as macros and maybe a little bit of protein, but only from fruits. And then my entire dinner is like a hundred gram, 120 gram of protein dinner. Right. And then if you look at uh, any data that's available for how long protein or fats last in your blood, it's usually about like 12 hours before it goes back down to baseline before your insulin resistance is like kind of reset because protein induces insulin res resistance transiently and elevates your blood glucose. Um, it takes about 12 hours for your metabolism to kind of reset. And then for sugar, if you eat it in isolation, your blood sugar spikes over within like two or three hours if you have good glucose tolerance. So then what this suggests is that you can divvy up your day into two portions where you have like a 12 hour of protein refeeding window and then a 12 hour FGF 21 protein deficient window. And as long as you have the protein window during your sleep, when you're inherently fasting, you can basically be eating all day and still have this protein deficient state and still get your daily need for protein. Right. Um, and this is like equivalent to essentially one meal a day, but you're adding sugar in the fasting period. Right. So, um, so like, I think for like a long-term thing, like there's, there's like two perspectives, right? Like Cole Robinson, the idea is maybe you can put these days of, of sugar fasting throughout your week and just cut on those days. And the rest of the days, maybe you gain a little bit of weight or you just calorie restrict. Um, but my idea is that you could do this, uh, you could do kind of like a spectrum within one single day where maybe you do the fruit to fil fruit till noon that like Noah Ryan does. If you want to be just like maintain weight, if you want to lose weight more aggressively, you could still get all of your protein to maintain your muscle, but then put all of your protein restriction in the beginning part of the day. And then you could do that every day. And just that's like the way that you eat now. Um, or, you know, you could go back and forth between all of these possible ones where you do a sugar fast, where you do halfway through the day, you start eating your protein where you do one day where all you're eating is satiating foods. Um, but the key is to separate them. I think you just have to.